Hello Internet! Today we are going to be taking a look at how to create your own custom post-processing effects in Unity's Universal Rendering Pipeline. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at how to do a pixelated screen effect. Um, I threw together a really quick sample scene. We are going to turn this into something that is automatically pixelated for us. Um, there's a few advantages to doing this. One of them is I'm using 3D meshes, and so we'll still be able to get pixelated effects while using basically vectors. Um, so we can get really concise and really precise things um, and even access things like an animation controller for a mesh, uh, but we'll still get like the pixelated look to it. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, we're just gonna build a really quick shader graph for that. And then we're gonna show how to set that up in the universal rendering pipeline. Uh, so we're gonna do this in a couple steps. Um, the first is just going to be creating a pixelated effect. The first one isn't quite going to do what we want entirely. Um, so we'll be adding on to that as we go. Um, but what we want to do is create a new shader graph uh, URP, and then there is a full screen shader graph. Um, so what this is, is it's going to be a shader graph that is intended to be run against the full screen. Um, and if we go and create this, and we'll just call this our pixelated post processing shader. You can call this whatever you want. Um, and we'll just open this up. Uh, and so we get a few different things here. Um, one of the important things is this vertex bit is empty. We don't have any vertices that we're going to be working with. Um, normally vertex, vert vertex shaders rather are things that you would use to kind of manipulate how your mesh is actually physically represented in space. We're not going to do that. We I've already rendered everything. We have the pixels. We just need to actually do something with it. Um, so there's basically five nodes that we need in order to do, th to do this. Um, the first one is just going to be our uh, sample buffer for our space, our UV space. Um, so we need to be able to sample the existing rendered content on the screen. Um, so we're going to be plugging in some current um, information. I'm going to be grabbing that from the Blitz source. Um, there's a few other ones that are available here, including the world normal space um, and motion vectors. So motion vectors are going to be representing movement of objects in space. Um, the world space uh, thing is going to represent sort of the angles uh, of objects. And then the Blitz source is going to be basically the actual color representation of the screen. Um, so we're going to be taking that and basically running this directly into our rendering. And so that is done. Um, and what we've done here is create a post-processing effect that re-renders itself. Um, it does exactly nothing. Basically receives a copy of a texture, samples the precise same coordinate in that texture, and then returns it back to you. Um, so nothing happens here but it works. Um, so what we need to do is actually kind of play around with the input to this. Um, what this node is taking as an input is a UV, which is representing where on that pre-rendered texture we want to sample from. And we want to change how we're going to do that sampling. Um, since we're trying to achieve like a pixelated effect, the way that I usually achieve this is by reducing the resolution of the samples we're taking. Um, now, I don't actually, I'm still learning the uh, Universal Rendering Pipeline's like shader graph stuff. I don't know a really easy way to like remove this um, node from here. So I have just been creating my own again. Um, and what we're going to do is just grab the screen position of this. Um, so we can just do this. Uh, and this is going to give us the screen position on the screen, um, that's not a great way to describe it, but we're going to basically grab the point on the screen where we are. Um, and this is more or less identical. There's no difference between this screen position and what is being plugged in here, as far as I can tell. Um, I, I couldn't really find much documentation on what this default is, um, but as far as I can tell, it's just the, the screen position. And so what that's actually going to represent is actually represented in this texture here. Um, it's a 2D coordinate system, basically. 
Um, in the bottom left of your screen is going to be zero, zero. And in the top right of your screen, um, my camera is reversed, so this, um, rather. Um, but up here um, is yellow, so that's one, one. Um, and so as you go across your screen, this is spanning your entire monitor. So basically zero is one side of your screen and one is the other side. Um, and that happens in both the X and Y planes. And that's being used to just sample your texture. Um, so we can just run that there. And now we've uh, also achieved nothing. Um, we're, not, we're not doing anything different. The interesting bits happen in between here. So what we're going to want to do is change the resolution of this. So rather than sampling everything uh, in like a smooth line, what we want to do is actually kind of make it more choppy. Um, the way I do this is by multiplying something. So this is going from zero to one. We're going to multiply that by some sort of pixel size. And then we're going to divide that afterwards to come back. In between those two operations, we're going to basically round the number. Um, so what that ends up looking like is basically a multiply. Uh, let's just throw this together really quick. Um, so multiply and then a divide. <laughs> um, and so this is a no-op as we've written it. But what we can do that's interesting here is round in between. So if we have 0 to 1, we can multiply that by, say, 512. Um, so like, I don't know, what, however many pixels you want to be in the screen. And so we're going to get 512 points. So, so from 0 to 511, um, because we're going to be rounding down. Um, and then we are going to round and then divide again. And so now that we have rounded everything, we've rounded to 512 different values. And now we're redividing that back into the correct coordinate space. So rather than having all the values, um, so in this case, I have a 1920 pixels across. So all of those would be in their own individual floating point values. We are removing that. that. That's no longer how this is represented. Instead, we're representing this as a fixed number of points in that space, our number of pixels. Um, so the way we can do this is just by adding a floor. Um, there's a few different rounding functions you can use here. Um, floor, ceiling, and round are going to do different things. Um, I use floor. If you use round, you might get a little bit of odd behavior at the edges of your screen um, because you'll represent half of a pixel on both sides. Um, so if you want that, um, you can do it. Uh, but I don't. Um, so. Basically, this is what our shader looks like. We are going to plug in a point on the screen. Then we're going to multiply it by a fixed value, round that down so we kind of cut off all of the extra bits in that, and then divide it back into the correct space, and then sample using that. So effectively, we're just reducing the, the overall precision of what we're trying to do. Uh, what we can do then is insert our number of pixels. Um, so all we have to do there is just add an input. So let's do that. Um, this is labeled as a float. Um, it technically could be a float. There's no reason not to have it be a float. Um, the integers aren't really a thing in, in graphics. That just isn't, isn't something you typically end up doing. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, this is basically, whoa me clicking a bunch of wrong things. Uh, but this is sort of what we're ending up looking like. So we're taking in our screen position, plugging it in, multiplying it by a fixed number of pixels, flooring that, so reducing the total precision, dividing it again by the same fixed value, and then sampling from that. And that gets us our pixelated values. There is an error here um, that we will get to in just a second. Uh, but first, we're just going to actually prove that this works. Um, so what I'm going to do is just assign this to 512. Um, you could actually see, if I go down to num the number of pixels, when we look at that divide, it looks correct. Um, so if the multiply, you'll see it all go yellow. 
on the sample texture, that's because it's greater than one and there's no good way to represent that as a number. And then we floor that and you can see everything gets kind of reduced down to a single pixel. And then in this case, our default pixel count is 10. So there's now 10 cells, both vertically and horizontally, that we're representing as the result of this divide. And then we're sampling from our render texture using those. Um, so every one of those uh, pixels basically in that cell is going to be looking at the same pixel in the original sample buffer. Um, what that means is that we're still rendering the full screen. We're, so we're still filling the entire screen and rendering a 1920 by 1080 screen of your game. Um, this isn't going to be a way to improve the efficiency of your game. It's not reducing the amount of things that are called. It's actually adding on to it. Um, what this is doing instead is just taking that result and doing some cool math. So you just kind of discard a lot of the bits that you don't want. Um, so there we go. There's our sample pixelation shader. I'm going to leave it at 10. This might get interesting. I don't think this is going to look particularly good, um, but there we go. Uh, so we jump back to our scene um, or our game. No, nothing has changed. That's expected. Um, what we need to do is actually update this now and actually tell the universal rendering pipeline to use this. Uh, so the way we do that is by going into edit and project settings. Um, there's a few different ways to access this menu. I will show you both. Um, and go into graphics and click on the rendering pipeline you're using. Um, remember, this is for the universal rendering pipeline if you're on the standard pipeline. Um, this, none of this is going to work. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and so if we go here, there's a whole bunch of renders that get shown. Um, in this case, just the one. Um, and I, this is from a 2D project, so that's why it says renderer 2D. And if we double click on that, we now have our render that's being used to actually render the scene. And all we have to do is click add render feature and add a full screen pass like this. Um, so this is our effect that we're trying to apply. Um, in this case, I believe it's just applying an invert as like the default. Um, we can get rid of that. And so everything is inverted from what it was. That's not what we want. Um, so instead, we're going to go and find our pixelated shader like this. And so by clicking on our pixelated post-processing shader, we now get this. Um, and you can see both our scene and our game view are now applying that renderer when they're rendering. Um, and so now we have a bunch of lines. Um, that's how you apply your shader. That's basically it. Um, you'll also notice um, in the asset menu over here in the project. Um, this is located under your settings. So you can also just find this renderer under your settings and just go there directly. You don't need to go through project settings if you do not want to. Um, both of those will, will work. Um, so it's just in settings under renderer 2D um, or wherever you've moved that to. Um, there's still a problem though. <laughs> um, notably, our pixels aren't pixels. Uh, <laughs> You'll see the uh, it's uh, particularly uh, um, clear in the game view, but we things are changing and they don't make a whole lot of sense when I do this. Um, the pixels are shrinking, uh, <laughs> and what's happening here is we've rendered a ten by ten screen. That's what we've done, but my screen isn't ten by ten, and I don't think most screens are perfectly square. Um, so what we want to do is be able to handle that ratio. Uh, and so we're going to actually slightly tweak the formula that we're using. And when we're calculating all of our pixel offsets to account for that ratio. Um, so we're going to actually plug in the screen ratio into this, and that will allow us to actually get squares instead of lines. <laughs> um, and this will go in both directions. So we'll get longer lines if we spread it out. Um, neither of those are particularly what we want. Um, so we're going to fix both of them by doing this trick. Uh, so what we need to do in order to make that happen is take this pixel count and change it. Uh, so the way this works is we can just plug in the screen. Uh, that is very small. So let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So 
uh, we have our screen here, and you'll see um, this is one. Um, as far as I can tell, that's incorrect. Um, what is actually happening here is the screen is going to represent in pixels the width and height of the screen that you're rendering to. Uh, and so you can use this to calculate this ratio that we're trying to get. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a variable, basically a floating point ratio of the height to the width. Uh, so we're just going to plug in a divide <clears throat> and go height uh, over width. And that's going to give us a ratio of how many pixels high to how many pixels wide our screen is. And then we can actually multiply that. So we're taking the, oops, we're going to be taking the pixel count and multiplying it by this new ratio that we've solved for and using that instead. Uh, where this gets tricky is we don't want to do this in both dimensions because that wouldn't actually change anything. Uh, what we want is to actually define only one of these as the ratio. So we're actually going to scale things non-linearly. Um, so our height is going to scale at a different rate than our width um, because our screens aren't the same size. Uh, so we want to take a vector 2, and we're just going to construct a brand new vector 2 from the values that we have right here. Um, so the way this is going to work is we are going to plug in our pixel count as our width. Um, and then this is our ratio that's going to represent the height over the width. Um, and so if we plug that in as our second option here, that should give us a different ratio for what we're actually trying to do. And then we can take this vector and plug it in in both parts of our formula, like this. Um, so nothing has changed. There's no, been no appearance of change because our input for this current screen are one by one, um, which isn't going to change anything for us. But if I save this and go and look at our game now, things are square. Um, what I've done is made it so that there's 10 pixels across the screen and a variable number of pixels vertically. Um, so as I shrink this, you'll notice the pixels vertically are also shrinking as I move my game view. Um, but if I do this, they don't shrink. Um, this might not be the effect that you're going for. You can change these ratios to adjust how this works. Um, but this is sort of the concept that we're working with in order to make this happen. Um, and then just to make this maybe a more useful example, we're going to change this to like 256. And now if I look at this, we still have our pixels, but they're maybe more legible. Um, and so I have 3D cubes that I can rotate in space and still maintain this pixelated effect. Um, and this will work for colorized things, for fully shaded models, because you're just taking the entire rendered scene and reducing how you're rendering the final result to the player. Um, so you can play with this as much as you want. You can use this to construct entirely different um, post-processing effects that have a completely different effect. Um, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Um, but I thought this is kind of an interesting example and kind of introduction to how to do these things. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video, I think. So until next time, see you, Internet.